One of the most complex parts of Figma isn't using the tool itself. It's creating a mental map of where things live, how your libraries work, how you should think about styles, variables, primitives. I mean, it's so complex that I have an entire live session in Figma Academy dedicated to the topic. And I want to give you a free preview of that today. And if you like it, then for the next week, you can enroll in Figma Academy and get six more hours of bonus recordings like this at no charge. So without further ado, let's dive in. So let's zoom out right here, uh, because this is actually what a traditional org might look like. You know, you, you might have your primitives. Again, these are kind of optional, like so you, you might not have them at all. It might just be a system level. But you're going to probably have multiple products in your org, right? So like maybe this is a web dashboard and maybe this is a mobile app. Or maybe there's a whole other one for like a marketing site. I mean, you might have two, you might have 20, depending on the size of your team. But like the default structure of a Figma org is you have the system that applies everywhere. And then you have these lower level products or areas of the product that you can use to kind of stay organized. So let's drill in and talk about that for a little bit here, because Something that you you know I'm sure you've probably realized by now is like not all components live in the UI kit. Like these are the really 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 simple things that apply everywhere. But you also have a bunch of other components that apply, uh, you know, to like a specific product. And so this idea of a product library is one that I think becomes really important here. So I'm just going to make these generic. Now, a product level library is what components or styles apply to all of the files in that product. Maybe it's our web dashboard, for instance, but they don't apply everywhere else. And I'll give you a very specific example from Maven, the product that we're using for the, the portal. So we have these, like what I called like the send bar, and it's basically that message input component. And there's different variants for it and you know different breakpoints. And I use this on almost every single page in the student portal. You know, if you're, if you're on any of the channels, if you're in a DM view, if you're in a thread view, it exists in a lot of different places. But I don't want to put that in the UI kit because in the Maven product ecosystem, there are two whole other products. We have a product just for admins, like in the instructors, and that's something that I designed. But then we also have a whole other product over here for a marketplace. And I don't want the send bar to live over there because it's completely irrelevant to those products. So this idea here of a product level library that is then imported into all of the files or flows into that specific product but doesn't live in the UI kit is a really powerful concept. And it works for startups. And you know, I was interviewing the person who built like all of the design system infrastructure for DoorDash, and they use the exact same concept. And so what I have for Maven is I made a library called Student Hub Components. And I'll actually even show you what it looks like here. So like this is, you know, that that sidebar in all of the different states. And you know, I can break out all of the different subcomponents and you know a lot of this stuff probably looks a little bit familiar um you know this is like the student bio and all of that kind of thing now, that library is then imported into all of my different files when i'm designing these pages and and i would refer to those as like um like a product level library although you might have different terminology internally okay Let's go a little bit more specific and then we can kind of zoom out and talk about it because you know you have components at the system level you have components at the product level but you also have components at like a specific flow or page level depending on how your team thinks about these files maybe you're creating a new uh, file for each like area of the product or maybe you think about it more in flows it doesn't really matter the point is you're going to have components that live at this level of specificity too and continuing the example on like the inbox tab in the student portal, for instance, there's this idea of a mention row and it has a bunch of different states and subcomponents and you know different types of mentions that can exist. And so I, I wanted to actually document like all of the different ways that this component can be used because there's, there's quite a bit actually, like what does it look like when it's a reaction instead? 
Now, those should be components because I want to get variance, but I don't want that to live in the UI kit, certainly, because it's irrelevant to every other file in my entire org. I don't even want it to live in the product level library, actually, because it only exists on that one page. And so if we look at this inbox file, you can see I have like a little page here where I would say like local components. And that's totally fine. And there's a whole lesson on how to organize local components. So we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. The point for right now is, is I want you to be able to see how components can live at these different levels. And if we go back to our flow chart here, I think that it's, there's a lot of really obvious components in a system, right? Like when we think about like a design system and the components that come to mind right now in your brain, those are super obvious and they exist across basically every single product. I want to run through a quick example, just to sort of talk about a different use case other than, than Maven. Um, and I think this Netflix one is kind of interesting because everyone has seen this face component, right? It's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's like so synonymous with Netflix. And no matter what product we are using, this face component is a part of it. And so it's like the perfect example where it's like, yeah, this guy is, is, a, is a true atom or however you want to refer to this core component. It should live in the UI kit because every single designer at Netflix that's working on anything should have access to this component, but it, you can get a little bit more specific as you start thinking about the different use cases. So there's also this, this who's watching onboarding screen, you know, um, maybe that does apply to every single product. I actually really don't know, but you might have this defined as a product level component, for instance, something that you for sure would have as a product level component is this menu drop down here. This is specific to the web browser and you know, the, the, the menu, the, this, this menu for like TV, fundamentally different. It's like in a sidebar for mobile, totally, totally different. It's in a sheet. This is the menu dropdown component for the web browser. And you better believe that Netflix has some kind of a, their, you know, obviously their system is infinitely more complex than this, but like the same high level principles still apply. They have some kind of project or team that is specific to the web browsing experience. And they have a library that contains, here is our little nav component. It needs to exist on all of the pages in the web browser. So it has to live outside of an individual file, but it is specific to the web browser. So we don't want to put it in the UI kit. And actually this is a really core, like a, a pretty consistent theme for product level libraries is like anytime that you are designing something like nav elements, like a header, a little profile drop down, settings overlay, whatever it is, like things that exist on every single page are the perfect use case for a product level library. Like if your product has a sidebar, that's where it should go. It should live in a product level library because it exists across all these different pages, but it's specific to that product. So this is a perfect example of a product level library, but you can continue to get even more specific. So like within this settings or account page, you have an account component. And this is the account component that is specific to the web browser. The account component looks hilariously different on mobile and on the television. There's no overlap. <laughs> They're not even light mode. So this component, there's one page in this web browser Netflix project that is the account. And inside of that account, there is like this member card or whatever. And it, that component only lives there because it's not used anywhere else. So hopefully that is a, a, is a kind of a way to, to just show this different level of specificity. And I, and I think another theme too is like, as we move into more specific libraries, often our components get more complex too. Because the more complexity that a component has, the more you're accounting for very specific types of use cases. And so that's another way to think about this, this flow here is you're increasing in complexity and as a result, specificity. I have a question. Please. Uh, when there are components that need to be moved to the team library where everybody else on the design team can see and use it, and you would just cut and paste it, then publish it? Or do you need to unpublish it, then cut and paste it? Then it, publish. This, this used to be so, I'm so glad you asked. I actually would have forgotten about this. This used to be so painful. And 
it's not anymore. I think I have a screenshot. Yeah. So this, um, it took my Zoom controls, which is annoying, but in the strategies for libraries lesson in mm -hmm. module two, uh, there's a link to Figma's documentation on cutting and pasting components. It's so easy now. You can cut it and paste it and it will preserve all of the connections. All you have to do is just publish whatever new library it's in now and everything just works. It's really great. Very, very little friction now.